You don't doubt what you see. We give God the glory. Because of his presence in our midst. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your way that will refresh us. Thank you, Lord, for your weight that will bring life to every dead bones. Thank you, Lord, for your weight that will revive us. We want to say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Say amen three times loud and clear. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Ask your neighbor, are you a soldier in the army of the Lord? Are you a soldier in the army of the Lord? Hallelujah. Amen. Please sit down. I want us to talk about the army of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I believe when the commander in chief is speaking, everybody salute. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, yes. The church of Jesus Christ is not a club. The church of Jesus Christ is not a club Amen. where you come and you entertain people, people that have problems. No. He said, I will build my church yes. and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. So a church is a place of confrontation. Amen. When we rejoice, we know there is a breakthrough. Amen. No matter what you are going through, I see the Lord connecting you with your greatness. Amen. The counsel of the wicked shall not prosper against you in the name of Jesus. Amen. One of the things you need to understand is that even mankind, men of power, have army. Now, I want us to speak about the army of the Lord. I want us to speak about the soldier of the Lord. And you will discover this happening from the friends of God. Somebody like Abraham, he was a friend of God. And he had his own army. People were born in his house. They grew up in his house. He trained them. The Bible speaks of the army of Abraham. One of the things we need to understand in the army of the Lord, you must be ready to be trained in the act of warfare and ready to fight for a cause. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn with me in the book of Genesis chapter 14, verse 14. In the book of Genesis chapter 14, verse 14. Now. Somebody say now. Now. This Old Testament, but when it's speaking about now, that means something is happening in the life of somebody here. If it's not happening with you, it's happening with your relative. Now, when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his 318 train servants who were born in his own house. 318 of Abraham's servants were fighting men. They were soldiers in the house of God. In the house of Abraham, they were born in the house of Abraham. Abraham trained them. Hallelujah. Amen. When Abraham heard that uh, his relative has been taken into captivity, he did something. Before him to do something, he had trained people right in his house. Abraham was mighty. If Abraham had 318 men, how many beds? 318 beds. How many children? What happened if all of them were married? You are talking now about 600 and something. Are you there? If they had children now, you are talking about some kind of thousands of people. All these people are living in the house. You don't hear Abraham one day is complaining, this month we don't have a we don't have money to pay rent. 
You don't hear things like, how am I going to feed these people? If it was then the Bible, we will learn about those things. Are you there? Yes. Say this to me, Abraham, Abraham. was a righteous man. He was, was a friend of God. Father, I want to be your friend. I want to be a righteous man. The grace to live a righteous life. Give it to me. So, a poor man cannot have an army. It will take a mighty man to have an army. Abraham had a powerful army with 318 trained men. We are so many of us here, we are more than 300. If all of us, we know what Jesus wants us to do, I can't tell you by now, this city of Johannesburg will be turned upside down. My Bible says, during the night, not during the day, this is where many people are confused with their life. During the night, a lot of things happen. Many people experience heavy problems in the night. Many people die in the night. In the night also, God do wonders big time. During the night, Abraham divided his men to attack the enemy. They attacked from all sides. It was in the night. And they won a great victory. Abraham and his army, they recovered all the goods and brought back his relative Lot and his possession together with the woman and the other people. He brought back everyone else who had been captured. In the family where we are coming from, many people have been taken to captivity. And we are not doing anything. Captivity of no marriage. Captivity of joblessness. Captivity of sickness and diseases. Captivity of poverty. They stop today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Our mission in the army of the Lord, our activity in the army of the Lord, is to set free those that have been held captive by the enemy. You see Prophet Isaiah crying from the book of Isaiah chapter 42, verse 22. But this is a people robbed and plundered. Prophet Isaiah is crying, these people are robbed and plundered. All of them are snare in all, and they are hidden in prison house. They are for prey, and no one delivers, for plunder, and no one says, restore. Today I pray, whatever the enemy has stolen from you, let them be restored in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the enemy restore all that they have stolen from your life, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Many of our people are trapped in pit and hidden in prisons, all that they own has been taken away, and no one is willing to give it back. They've become prey with no one to deliver them, because they refuse to be part of the army of the Lord. If everybody understands what Jesus wants, if you understand what Jesus wants us to do in this situation that we are going through, nobody will talk about poverty. Amen. I'm not here, amen. amen. Take it easy. I told you, you see. He's crying what? Mama. He should be crying what? Jesus. May the Lord deliver you today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 
Be free in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.